1970 Dodge Challenger RT by AMT Ertl. Coming up next. Hello Mopar fans, are you ready for another amazing model kit? Well, today we are taking a look at the 1970 Dodge Challenger RT by AMT Ertl. And this is another one of those great model kits that was, of course, designed in the 1990s and early 2000s by that awesome AMT staff back in the day who were taking and making quality job number one because they were competing with Ravel Monogram and Tamaya of Japan. And they wanted to step up to the plate and build something amazing. So I am lucky to actually get this model kit. I do believe it is on loan from my wife, Julie. I can't remember if this is actually one of my own. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for loaning us this one if you actually loaned it to us. <laughs> but anyway, don't forget to pound that notification bell because I'm going to be making more of these videos as we go along. And like, subscribe and share this channel with all your friends and family. Now, this model kit's come out a few times, so let's take a look at some of the box arts. And without f after that, we'll actually take a look at the model kit itself. Dodge entered the popular pony car market in 1970 with the Challenger RT, which is of course our topic today as we take a look at the AMT Ertl 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. Now this kit of course is built by the original AMT crew that were trying to compete with Ravel Monogram and Tamiya of Japan for best made model kits. So if we tip this up on the side and zoom in a little bit here, we can check out the features of this kit. So the type is a front engine, a rear wheel drive, four passenger hardtop convertible. Engine is a 440 cubic inch V8. The horse or specifications, the horsepower 390 at 400 or 4,600 RPM. Torque 490 at 3,200 RPM. Compression ratio was 9.7 to 1. Carburation was three Holly two barrels. The transmission is two speed manual. The wheels are 14 inch chrome steel road wheels. Tires are Goodyear tires. Exterior features, shaker hood. Parts included to build your choice of hardtop or convertible body styles. Parts, over 80 parts, full color decals, paint and cement not included. So if we pull back out here, we can see that we've got a skill level two kit and of course our AMT hotline phone number. Turning on the side, we get to the top. The top is our photos. So here we have build your choice of hard top or convertible. There's our 446 pack engine with a shaker hood scoop. Our Goodyear tires, Polyglass GT radio, or Polyglass GTs, <laughs> and our detailed interior. So let's just go back here again and we'll turn our kit over and pop open the lid. So here, of course, we've got our AMT instruction sheet with this very nice drawing. Inside, oh, I've even got some pace car decals in here from Fred Caddy. Surprise, surprise. I even surprised myself. These would not come with the real kit. I had to send away for these. There's what's coming with the real kit, our Mopar decal sheet. Okay, let's just move that out of the way. Here's our gray plastic components. As you can see, there's our vinyl top and our rear spoiler. Here we have the hood and all those goodies from the motor. Our seats here, and it looks like hood hinges, separately molded as well as the rear panel. Oh, looks like I must have popped the dashboard out. There's our interior bucket and our radiator and radiator wall. There's our instrument panel there. Chassis, whoops, a front clip and firewall. And then here's our body. 
the, the uh, convertible there. Chrome components, hooray. And then we've got our go and show stuff. Wheels and some engine bits, differential, probably the Dana. There's our exhaust. Here's our glass, and note the sunken in bit. Unfortunately, these were not bagged, and they do look like they got a bit scratched. Ooh, and a headlight popped off somewhere in the box. Ah, uh, gotta be careful to find that. There's our suspension and engine block. Oh, and there goes my stand cracking down. I'll fix that in a minute. The show must go on, right? <laughs> There's our convertible boot. Our Goodyear tires. These are not the normal polyglass shown on the box, though. And then there's our red tail lights and some of our engine components. And I don't see that little headlight. Okay, well, hopefully it's still in the box. All right, so I'll clear this out of the way, fix our overhead camera stand, and we'll take a look at the instruction sheet. So here we have the instruction sheet for our Challenger RT. And again, this is one of those great big fold-out instruction sheets. It does not say who the artist is, unfortunately. But down here we get, of course, our great write-up for the kit. In 70, Dodge released one of its most versatile cars ever offered. The Dodge Challenger drove salesmen crazy with its choice of six different models and no less than nine engine options that included the ever-powerful 426 Hemi. In addition to the Skin and power choices, a wide range of accessories were available, and get this, 18 color sec selections ranging from white, of course, to the outlandish Plum Crazy and Go Mango colors, new for 1970. Okay, then it goes on. <laughs> Alright, so these again are the gigantic instruction sheets, which if we zoom out and see just how big this map is. So uh, let's go and open this up and see all our assembly steps. So here we have our 446 pack engine assembly, the only engine choice we get in this kit. And as you can see, it's a two part engine with transmission off the back. We have our starter motor molded in place as well as the transmission. Cylinder head left and right go on. There is our six pack intake manifold. And here's our Chrysler fuel pump and front cover, as well as the oil filter, which stuck out straight ahead. Pretty easy to get at when you are doing an oil change. And here we have step two of the engine with our right and left exhaust manifolds going on. And they also give you the exhaust pipe part of it going off, which is easy to hook up underneath. Here we have our distributor going in place, as well as our six pack carburetor, shaker hood scoop, and the hood scoop top. And there's a decal here for the 446 pack, which is nice because in some models from like monogram and that, you actually have to paint this on and it's really tiny. <laughs> so it's good that they have a decal for it. Now step three shows our valve covers going on after of course you glue on your shaker hood scoop. And then the front belts, and there's also a power steering pump molded in place and our alternator and our fan. So once all this is together, you have your nice 446 pack. Next up is our wheel and tire assembly. And again, here we have the stock wheels, which are very similar to the Magnum 500 GM wheels. Uh, let me know what they're called in the Chrysler terminology here. There's a Goodyear polyglass tire going on there. Note Goodyear lettering can be painted white using an artist type of acrylic paint. Uh, there's our inner wheel, and then our wheel retainer it says to paint these silver, I guess to match the chrome. Here is step five, showing our chassis pan going in with the K-member front suspension, which of course has the torsion bars for springs. And then our big engine will drop in underneath here. And step six shows our exhaust and mufflers going in. And of course they hook up to our exhaust manifolds. So that'll be nice to see. Step seven shows our drive shaft being put in place. You're gonna hook it into the motor first. Uh, glue your differential together and then swing these into place. Of course, Chrysler had the big long leaf springs in the back as well as the shock absorbers. So you have torsion bars up front, shock absorbers, and <laughs> torsion bars up front, 
long leaf springs in the back and that's how these Chrysler pony cars were built. Step 8 shows our wheels being put onto the axles. And here in step 9 we have our interior going together. Now again our interior is a tub which would have been nice to have those separate panels in there. The seat front and back glue together and then drop in the interior. There's our shifter knob goes in the center console which of course you would paint wood grain which is a feature of the Chryslers and wood grain on the instrument panels in there I do believe. Yep that's what it says. That's what it says and then our steering column which is sort of like a big collapsible spring which is interesting and then we've got our steering wheel so all that together and you get your stock interior and here's our body going together body preparation for step one step 10 body preparation cement part 11 to fire 11 cement part 11 firewall to the body and remove the runners paint the parts shown below the color of your choice See chart below. Allow to dry and apply decals. So it looks like you put this in first and then cut out these uh, extra bits. Uh, sun visors are in, in this and you paint them in the interior color. There's your roll, rolled pan at the back, your body, and the front facade. And then here we have our hood and there's a decal that goes underneath on the inside, which is interesting. Available 1970 exterior colors and paint codes. EB3, EB5, so light blue metallic, bright blue metallic, dark blue metallic, bright red, light green metallic, dark green metallic, dark burnt orange metallic, dark tan metallic, light gold metallic, white black cream, beige plum crazy, sublime, go mango, hemi orange, and banana. Yep, banana, yellow. Note, use contrasting body decals, white with dark colors, black with light colors. All right, I will do that. And here's our body illustrations and the decals that they're going with. So the black stripe across the back. I do believe this is one option, version A. And version B has the decals going along the sides. And it does say decal 4, see above. So you'd have a stripe going across and then these ones here. So I guess version A doesn't have the ones along the side. So there you go. Now step 11 here is where you decide if you want to have this as a convertible or to put on the optional vinyl hard top. And then our windshield will pop in place if you want the hard top. There's a rear window that goes in there too. And then our interior will pop up inside. And here's step 12 with our body more or less together. Uh, now we've got our brake booster and our master cylinder. Our battery will drop here on the inner fender apron. And then our radiator shroud will glue on. And then we have our front fascia, oh, here. And then our headlights will all pop into place, except for the one I lost somehow. And our front plated bumper will pop in here. Now there is one thing to know about Chrysler's, which is different from painting GM's. General Motors, it would all be painted black in here, flat black or semi-gloss black. With Chrysler's, they painted the uh, car, these are all unibody. So they would paint the car uh, with the unibody, would have all the inner aprons and everything all together as one thing. So inside here is all body color. And then what they would do is paint uh, flat black on this side of the radiator, or the radiator support wall, so that you don't see color in through the outside of the car. This would all be blacked out when you look in that way. So it made for a nicer, cleaner front end. Here in panel 13, we see the body completed being dropped onto our chassis. And once this is all together, we're going to put on our outside mirrors. And then our radiator hose will hook in on top of the uh, engine here into, of course, our firewall, which is up above. Or not our firewall, our radiator. I keep getting that <laughs> messed up. There's our hood and our hood hinges, which glue underneath. And then we have our license plate and one of the decals going on there. Step 14 shows the rear of the car going together. So we've got our rear panel and bumper assembly pops in. There's a rolled pan which will glue in along the bottom here. Our rear tail lights and our license plate. That completes our look at our instruction sheet for our 1970 Challenger RT.
And here we have our Challenger RT body, which of course is one of the great pony cars of the era. Now there's a lot of things to remove here. Of course we've got those two. And then this great big frame up here. They do have sun visors molded into the windshield frame, which is nice of course for your convertible. And then if we look here on the sides, we have the typical Chrysler door handle, which is the sort of refrigerator paddle type. The uh, gas tank uh, sitting there. Well, not the gas tank, but the... Um, huh, you know, you unscrew it. <laughs> anyway, it's sitting there. There's the side marker lights. Uh, I hate when my mind slips out of what those things are. There's the Challenger script up front and the other turn signal. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Here we've got our little latch for the key to unlock that trunk that's sitting there. Again, proportions are quite nice. I um, have to remove the mold marks. There's a bit of flash around here, which of course your hobby blade will be able to remove very easily. So there's our body. The vents, of course, are under the hood. So again, that long hood going up to the windshield which is getting into the late, or the 70s design. In the 60s, of course, it was still going up to the vents. Now here's what it looks like with the vinyl roof on. And as you can see, it is a very nice fit. And a very nice thing that AMT actually did this in two components. Vinyl texture is nice. It's got the proper overlaps there. Underneath, good pattern. A couple little mold marks. Might want to try to remove them. And then we've got our rear spoiler here, which go across on the deck, just like that. So again, very nicely done. And of course, another feature is the convertible boot, which is folded down, which again, fits in there quite nicely. And here's our first batch of gray parts trees. And as you can see, there's quite a bit in this kit. Here's the one with the chassis, firewall, and front fascia. And then there's our hood, or facade, I guess. There's our hood, our intake manifold, our belts and pulleys, and power steering pump. There's the two-piece shaker scoop, the little, uh, I guess those are the shock absorbers. There's our, our uh, tricarbs, pardon me, <clears throat> license plate, distributor battery, steering column, uh, brake master cylinder components, the top of the differential, the differential with the springs and rear axle, our uh, drive shaft, our cylinder heads, um, oh, real wheel retainer, there's our steering wheel, our wheel backs, here we have our exhausts and mufflers, exhaust pipes and mufflers, there's our rear panel, our back of our seats, these are like banana style, <laughs> anyway, uh, there's our uh, hood hinges. Here we have the 446 pack motor and manual transmission. There's our exhaust manifolds and here's our K member. And it looks like I've got a bent torsion bar here. So that's no fun. <laughs> well, it shouldn't be too hard to straighten up. So let's just move these pieces off to the side here and we'll take a nice look at them up in the camera. Okay, here is our chassis, and as you can see, it is a very nicely done. This, of course, is a unibody car, so we've got our front um, unibody here, and then it goes off into the frame edges on the door panels, and then we've got our rear portion of the frame. Again, nice detail, nice and crisp, really well executed. On the other side, we've got two little buttons for our interior to drop in. Not too bad on the mold marks on the inside. A couple on the top there and along here. Then our front panel. Looks very nice. Very nice. And then there's our firewall. Okay, so we'll move that out of the way. Here is the K member. And again, this bent on me. I'll have to try to straighten it out. Actually, what would be nice in here is chop them off and put in uh, brass wire or something. Anyway, nice detail on the K-member. 
and then we've got our manifolds there and the 440 a little bit soft on the side cover here for our transmission but I mean it, it'll look good I don't think anyone will discredit it some mold marks inside here again get rid of them with your number 16 hobby blade now let's take a look at our hood see the nice vent in there uh, big hole for the shaker scoop there's our hood pins little Chrysler emblem and then um, there's a shaker scoop the in uh, carburetors shock absorbers again nice detail uh, not bad for mold marks bit of flash on it of course have to get rid of that with your sandpaper and number 11 hobby blade adzing off the uh, stuff which is a scraping method there's our banana seats with the uh, pleats in them going side to side instead of up and down again though so I, I think this was a fiberglass in the back I'm not too sure you guys let me know Mopar guys will know that one so I'll leave that for them in the comment section if you don't mind <laughs> okay a couple mold marks off the back which you can scrape down and make look nice make look nice in Russia make look nice okay and then there's our uh, cylinder heads one of the wheel backs the other one must be in the box I always like these steering wheels on here I think they're kind of cool differential looks nice could be a Dana let me know battery and again it's got the cables off the side so nicely detailed great looking kit and last we have our exhaust pipes and mufflers and oh it even has the little tailpipes molded in the extensions so again paint these silver and then paint in there black or even drill that out if you want I don't know kind of hard to drill square holes anyway so there's our gray components for this kit I don't think I'll be able to lay them out as nicely as I did originally now well, let's see get everything in frame here okay eh. well not the best but those are the first batch of gray components so here we have the remainder of the gray parts and I thought I'd just throw the tires in this time around just for the heck of it okay so there's our radiator and wall and uh, it also has a radiator shroud on here so nice that that's all one piece there's our interior as a bucket, and this is a pretty nicely detailed bucket as far as buckets go. There's our dashboard. Here's the front engine cover, the fan, the, the uh, radiator hose, and then our inserts for our wheels. And then, of course, our tires there. So let's just move some of this out of the way. I don't know if we want to see these small bits. They are very nicely detailed. The fan has a proper clutch on it and all the rest but let's move this out of the way and just take a look at our interior so here you can see there are some very heavy mold marks but I do believe the seats cover those you might just want to take your knife and quickly go over there number 16 just to knock off the high points of that there's our seats with the pleats <laughs> and they do actually give you the proper pedals so we've got the clutch the brake and the gas pedal although being in a tub these look like little square blocks when you look at them from the top they're not quite pedal like however uh, this is a little thing I think you might want to fill that big hole in there <laughs> some putty I think this is supposed to be a overflow tank or something they do have the little detail in here for those inner front fenders now there's four big mold marks right there along the side of that fan shroud which need to be scraped down and again a little bit of flash up here this would be facing the front of the car so paint all this flat black but on this side paint it the body color on the inside maybe a little bit of flat black blow over I don't know no I don't think it would have that but again they would blank this off because you don't want to see the body color through the grill it doesn't look good it looks better to have the grill black and that's how Chrysler did it I got a magazine on it maybe one day I'll do a painting episode with uh, what the magazine the real car colors were okay so moving that out of the way there is our dashboard and you can see if you added some wood grain in there it would look really nice 
paint the whole thing flat black. This one does have a little glove box. So very nicely done. Radio I think is down there. Any of you guys that had uh, this car might remember your dashboard. Anyway, if you had one of these, let us know in the comments down below. Oh, and I'm forgetting our tires here. So let's just zoom in on these. Back a bit. Okay, these tires are not quite the same Polyglass Goodyear GT tires that we know about. But these are the more solid ones. And these ones came in some of the Buick kits. The Buick. <laughs> All right. So you can see a nice tread detail. Uh, there's two of the, the Goodyear ones. Some of them are hollow and some of them are solid. These are the solid ones. So these will... Oh, <laughs> that one disappeared. These will sand down nicely in your tire spinner and look just excellent. And now we have my favorite component, which is the chrome. And these pony cars, they were all like small competition race cars, basically. <laughs> muscle race cars. Uh, they didn't have too much chrome. So as you can see we have our front grille here which of course you can always use some of that uh, Nuln oil wash from Games Workshop to put in there. Uh, looks like the rear view mirror. There's our our wheels, our sport wheels. And then here we have our valve covers, side mirrors, rear bumper, or, sorry, that would be the front bumper, and there's our rear bumper and our alternator, and of course the shifter level lever. Now remember that these Chrysler alternators had the red coil exposed, so you can see the wires in there. And then there's our red tail lights. Now you might want not want to scrape the chrome out of there because of course you can see how the red tail lights reflect through the chrome. These will fit in that recess there and look quite nice. Anyway, let's bring this up to the camera and take a look at our details. So again, there's our front grill. It's got the name in there. Dodge in the back on the bumper. And again, nice wheel detail. Turning it over, of course. Uh, not really bad on mold marks. Oh, a couple there. Oh no, those are locator pins. Pardon me. And of course you want to paint this black inside, so if you flip the car over you won't see it. See big chrome going on there. So again, nicely executed and very well done. Now we have our glass components, and of course there's our front windshield and rear window. And it is sunken around here, so it'll fit tighter up in that convertible top. Or sorry, the vinyl top, vinyl hard top. And you'll be happy to know I did find that missing headlight, thank goodness. I'm happy anyway. <laughs> Okay, and there's the other headlights. Now remember, there is a crosshatch pattern in here, and you want it to run north and south instead of at a 45 degree angle. And then here's our red taillights going in. So I'll just bring the taillights up to the camera. You can see, if you turn it this way, that there are some reliefs in there. And I do believe that the little white square in the center is supposed to be painted white for backup lights. Although I, I might be mistaken on that, actually. But anyway, well, Mopar guys would know. Mopar guys, leave comment. <laughs> okay, and then there's our glass windshield and everything. And again, those little headlights. So, quite nice. Quite nice indeed. And since I already reviewed the tires, I'll just move right into our decal sheet here. And after, I'll show you those Fred Caddy decals, which I ordered special for the pace car. Okay, so what we have here is a shaker sticker, which goes underneath the hood. And, of course, these are decals, right? A 446 pack on the side of the shaker hood. RT decals, Challenger RT. Another little tiny Challenger. And then we've got the Mopar magazine decals, which sort of look a little off-register to me. Uh, here's our black and white stripes. That's a black one, of course. There's a white one. Uh, it does look like it's notched, actually, for the spoiler, or maybe even some of the side script, or side marker lights. And then here we have the side stripes in black and white. And then here we have MXC61 from Pennsylvania, and they call it the Keystone State. In Pennsylvania! <laughs> anyway... Uh, let's just move this up to the camera a little bit so we can see those better. 
So there are the license plates and all the little goodies. And that will bring us to the conclusion of our decal sheet. So here is the special Fred Caddy decal sheet, or Fred Caddy. I don't know if it was Caddy or Caddy, but anyway, here it is. This one is for the official pace car, which was driven May 29th, 1971 at the 55th Indianapolis 500 mile race. Now these have black and white. Uh, what you do is you lay down the white first and then you lay the black over top of it so it will pop out. You have your Dodge logos, uh, black and white, and then these circular chrome rings are for your air cleaner. And then you put this over the top of that so that it has a proper silver through the 340 and the four barrel. So we have different engines here from Fred Cady, uh, different engine decals, I should say. There's the 446 pack decal. Um, yes, and you got black and white, so you overlay these so they pop out. Uh, 440, 383, and 426. So 340 four barrel, 383 magnum. And then what we got 340 here and the 440 with the circular air cleaners. And then our Firestone tire decals and a lot of Challenger and Charger things. Oh no, they're all Challenger, just different size. Hemi, uh, 346 pack, 383 Magnum, Challenger RT. So yeah, this was a, a cool decal sheet. It's too bad Fred Cady isn't still around. Now, in case you're wondering, here's what the 1971 uh, Dodge Pace car looked like. Of course, the grille is different from the 70, but it's essentially the same car. There's the Pace car decals up the side, and it looks like the hood actually hinged out backward, much like a rumble seat. And that completes our look at the AMT 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. This is the 1994 edition. And if you have built this model kit or one of the predecessors to it, please let us know in the comment section down below how you liked it, how you enjoyed the build, and how you built it. And if you want to show us pictures, send it over to our Facebook account. And I'll leave the link in that description down below in our comment section. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that great review of the 1970 Dodge Challenger RT by AMT Ertl. And have you ever actually owned one of these in the real world? If so, let us know what color it is. Share your photos of your model if you got it on our Facebook page. And yeah, let us know all this cool stuff down in the comments below. And... Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all our friends and family. If you want to see our most current model car kits, come and check it out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first to see it. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.